What is up, everybody? I hope you guys had a wonderful Friday. Thank God it's uh, the end of the week for most of us who don't have to work on Saturdays. So hope you got some good plans. Whatever you do, stay safe. And yeah, that's uh, what I got to say about that. Relax, kick back. If you're just going to, you know, have one of those introverted type of weekends, binge YouTube, watch Netflix. Heck, I don't blame you. I'd be doing the same thing right there. But in saying all this, there was a an episode I posted, I guess you, that's what you would call it, or a video that I had posted on this channel, about incels. Now, this is a fairly new terminology to me because I never really delve into what incels actually meant. And so, by reviewing the video that I did, or reacting, shall I say, um... You know, this was the case of Elliot Rogers, which he claimed to be the supreme gentleman. And he was magnificent and gorgeous and sophisticated and drove a BMW. And he came from what I would assume an upper middle class to high class, you know, family because his father was a filmmaker in uh, the UK. And then they moved over here to L.A. where his father continued that job. And so he was basically a, a spoiled little brat. Um and this is a part where I know it could push a lot of people over the edge, but he felt bullied his whole life. I guess some kids taped his head to uh, uh, the desk. And me, when I was going to high school, I was such a big guy. And I remember, you know, grade school and all the way up until I hit my growth spurt in like seventh grade, I used to get bullied all the time uh, saying, wow, that fat ass could run fast and you know, when it's five against one, six against one, <laughs> that that's not <laughs> really fair. But luckily, I've only been in one fight in my whole life, and I didn't punch a person on his head. I just got him to the ground by leg sweeping him because I was in Taekwondo and thought I was like Bruce Lee and shit. <laughs> but after that, I joined Golden Gloves more or less to protect myself, and I lost my first two matches because I do everything by weight and not by age. And so... You know, I was going up against guys who were, you know, older, more experienced and were the same weight as me just because I was such a heavy kid, big kid. Uh, but I eventually learned, you know, self-defense. And, you know, thank God, knock on wood, to this day, I've never been in a street fight. I've always been the one, even when I was drunk. When, I'm, when I drink, I'm like a happy drunk. I, I don't get violent. I don't get upset. I don't, you know, I just, I'll have fun. But I haven't drank in, in 15 years, so I don't know if that's changed. But I know at the time, like, I couldn't stand bullying. And uh, I remember this kid came to our school, and he was bigger than me. And immediately, he started bullying a lot of kids. So I offered him. There was a rec center from, you know, a little bit away from, not a little bit away. It was walking distance from our high school. And I said, I'll tell you what, if I kick your ass, you know, uh, in a boxing match, you stop bullying. If uh, you kick my ass, I'll keep my nose out of your business. So he agreed. Um, and not knowing, you know, I kind of set him up with this. Not knowing if he knew how to box or not, but I knew I did. And I broke his nose um, and made him get on the knee when I punched him in the gut. Knocked the air out of him. And then they called it. So I was able to prove my point. Um by doing what I did, because I, I knew how it felt to get bullied. I mean, shoot, I'll give you a nasty-ass story of what some punk-ass little kid did to me in, like, sixth grade while running around the gym, and I still am traumatized. I have a, I'm terrified of moths. I hate moths. Oh, my God. Usually, I won't kill, like, animals or insects. Like, I feel bad. I just trap them and put them outside. Moths, mosquitoes, man, I will freaking flamethrow their ass in a heartbeat because this little punk-ass kid grabbed a dead moth and while we were running, he threw it in my mouth. And that's how badly I was picked on. And it was, like I said, when I hit sixth, seventh grade, like I just sprouted up to, uh, I think by the time seventh grade come around, came around in eighth grade, I was like 6'2". And then that all that shit stopped. And by the time I made it to high school, like I said, I went to a prep school, private school and, uh, the student body, there was only five minorities, including myself right away. I got, Hey, are you in a gang? I'm like, 
Why? Because I'm darker? I, I don't know how to answer that, but no, I'm not in a gang. Uh, I just only went there for, on a football scholarship, so uh, as long as I did, you know, played football, I got a private school education, which was well worth it. It was a good balance out. And no bullying there. And I still stuck up for the little guys because it causes such trauma, such trauma for these poor kids growing up. I think it's bullshit. And what they did to this, even though he's narcissistic, even though he's just contradictive, you know, in what he did, I could still kind of relate with the fact of him. Well, I can't relate about not fitting in. I mean, everybody always welcomed me with open arms uh, in school and work and whatever. I mean, you know, I've never been casted out to the outside, but apparently he was never like he really only had online friends. And so he got more and more um, intolerable of seeing couples saying, you know, why is she with this guy who's a low life and doesn't even know the people and, you know, she likes him and why can't women be like that with me? And, you know, just like I said, a total narcissist. And uh, then he goes on that awful killing rampage and to make, you know, retribution for what? I mean, in the documentary, it said that he didn't even try to make friends or approach girls in the first place. Like he expected them to come to him. And that's what drove me nuts and now he's regarded as the king of the incels even though he died uh by a self-inflicted gunshot wound when the police were chasing him um you know he's still revered now going into this video i learned more about the social site uh 4chan and i guess you don't have to sign up you know, put any of your information that you could just post whatever you want. And it's been known as a place of, you know, posting racist, you know, shit, violence, you know, anything that has to do with what you would get, you know, booted out of another social site for me personally. I only do Facebook. I I've just made an Instagram account because the person who I did my intro outro before I have this awful setup, which, like I said, I bought the uh, Adobe, and I'm still trying to figure out how to use that thing, so bear with me. But, like I said, it's not the most high class of videos that I make for now, but uh, he suggested, like, you know, make an Instagram account, so I made it, like, really obscure, like, you know, use my name, but then a ton of different digits <laughs> afterwards. Uh, but, yeah, the only social site, I don't use Twitter, um... And I had no idea what 4chan was about. I know a little bit about Reddit. I posted the fucked up story that happened in my... Uh, it, it's a fucked up scary story that a lot of people were there to witness it. And it was demonic. It was... I can't even explain it. But before straying away from that... You know, into that topic. I found this video that really interested me about incels and to learn more about them. So this may be a little dark and gloomy. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I've never heard of the content creator, but he does have a lot of uh, subscribers and views, so he must be you know pretty popular. Uh, but let's uh, let's give it a watch. If we're gonna talk about 4chan, first we have to know exactly what 4chan is. Loading up 4chan.org, you get a notice explaining exactly that. 4chan is a simple image-based bulletin board where anyone can post comments and share images. Users do not need to register an account before participating in the community. 4chan was created on October 3rd, 2003 by Christopher Poole, aka Moot. The website began as a place to talk about anime and manga. Fast forward to 2021, and the website has a reputation for some of the worst people on the internet. Hackers, white supremacists, racists, people that create hoaxes for fun, and so much more. But most of all, incels. Today, we will be talking about the disturbing world of 4chan criminals. Hello, beautiful. Should I just start my videos off like that? Just calling you guys beautiful? Not even like, hello, beautiful people, just hello, beautiful. Like, I'm talking to one person. 
<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another video. Since it is the final week of October, I am, I guess, the Grim Reaper. I guess I'm the Grim Reaper today. So I do want to let you guys know that we do have a PO box and I'm currently wearing some merch that a fan sent me. So if you guys send me merch, you're getting a free promo, bro. Like I love clothes, free clothes. I love free clothes. I also have this beautiful little bracelet that someone by the name of Eurydice sent me. So thank you so much. I'm gonna be wearing this as long as I can keep it up. And also I know no one asked, but here's my kitten, Mojo. You love me, huh? Nah. Go there. I do want to let you guys know that I'm going to be going to the Glaive and Eric DOA concert on November 5th. So if any of you guys go there, say hi to me. Do you guys listen to Hyperpop? I, I would hope you guys listen to Hyperpop because I'm going to be releasing my music in like 2022. Going to make a vlog about the concert on the second channel. So make sure to go subscribe to the second channel and make sure to follow my Instagram. Anyway, so for today's video, we're going to be going over five 4chan criminals. These are not in any order, like if they're like best to worst, which is would be weird. I wouldn't name it that. But yeah, it's in no order. Make sure to go grab a glass of water and hydrate yourself. Let's get started with the video. Bianca Devins. I guess this one just hits different due to how recent it was and how young Bianca was. So first I want to cover the details of the case and then we'll talk about the rumors that happened after she passed away. So it's 2019 in Utica, New York, and Bianca Devins is a 17-year-old girl who would frequently visit websites such as 4chan and would hang out in the image boards known as Robot9001, Cams and Meetups, and Fashion. And she would also use Discord to make online friends. She would use both, basically. She had anxiety, which limited her from making friends in person. Due to being a girl, she stood out in these male-dominated spaces. Not only was she a girl, but she had this alternative look, which a lot of people like. She began obtaining orbiters. The best way I can explain what an orbiter is is basically an obsessed simp. Guys that orbit around girls and obsess over them. One of these orbiters, which she thought was her friend, his name was Brandon Clark, who at the time was 21. This man was, and still is, the definition of an incel. I would like to read this piece from HuffPost to provide some more context. Claire, 19, said she started talking with Bianca two years ago. They bonded over their experience with older, abusive men on 4chan. They had both started using the site at a young age, when they were lonely and looking for friends. What happened next was textbook, Claire said. They attracted men who wanted young, quote, innocent girls to obsess over. As soon as the girls did anything to break that image, like find a boyfriend or have sex, the spell was broken, and the men would retaliate, using anything they had to hurt them, including posting intimate photos of them or their chat logs without permission. So yeah, you get the deal. Men who have never had a female's attention, so they retaliate when things don't go their way. Anyway, let's continue with the story. Brandon invited Bianca to a concert, and she agreed to go. Her mother met Brandon, and it seemed he was a nice average guy, so she let her daughter make plans with him. On July 14th, 2019, they went to the concert, and while there, Bianca recognized another online friend who was named Alex. She actually was the person that invited him. It seems she was more interested in Alex than in Brandon, and at one point, Brandon goes to get something from his car. However, when returning, he saw Bianca and Alex sharing a kiss. After this, his mood changed for the worse, and he was her ride home. A few moments later, an image of Bianca with her throat slit open was posted onto a Discord server she was in with the caption, Sorry you're gonna have to find someone else to orbit. People in the server were worried as to if it was her or just a random image from Google. Someone reverse image searched it and found nothing. There was reportedly also a video of the, of the murder, which I initially thought was a rumor, but after doing my research, there 100% was a video. And I don't know if that's ever been released to the public, but not that I want to watch it, but I've never, never seen it. Seen the images, but I've never seen the, the video. So I'm assuming someone asked Brandon where he was or something along, along those lines, because in this next screenshot, we see Brandon say this, my f car, I f Bianca dumbass. Anyways, remember to subscribe to PewDiePie. Also to the f Alex with a Chinese username, Hope it was worth it. She was gonna go home today. Why did he have to bring PewDiePie into it? I, I don't understand that. I remember when the whole meme was going on of subscribe to PewDiePie, but like, ew. I'm sure he probably said it because that's what the Christchurch shooter said before going on a killing spree, which we will talk about later in this video. Then Brandon began posting on his Instagram story and Snapchat. I'm not gonna show the images, but I'll read the captions attached to them. I'm sorry, Bianca. Here comes hell. It's redemption, right? Thanks to everybody who was good to me. I'll miss you all. I'm sorry, Bianca. Ashes to ashes. Eventually, Utica police got a phone call from Brandon himself stating this. 911, what is the emergency? Uh, my name is Brandon. Um, the victim is Bianca Michelle Devins. I'm going to myself. It's just stay in line with me, okay? No, I'm not gonna stay in line with you. I'm going to be down on the ground. When police arrived, they found a pit of fire with Brandon's laptop in it, a tarp, and Brandon attempting to commit 
with a knife in his neck. He failed doing so, but under the tarp was Bianca's lifeless body. Brandon has been sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. If he was burning his laptop, bro, who knows what could have been in that f***ing laptop. So now let's get on to the rumors that started popping up after her death. So if you were on the internet throughout 2019, which I'm fig I figure a lot of you were, I'm sure you remember this story. But shortly after the images appeared on Discord, they began circulating on Twitter, Instagram, and 4chan. Horrible people would post those images of Bianca on Instagram and tag her accounts Why? in the pictures. Not only this, but scummy Instagram... Why do you have to be such a fucking asshole to be doing that? To reposting of, I don't understand people, man. I guess when you could hide behind a keyboard and no one knows who you are, fucking people really let them true selves out, and this is just bullshit. Meme pages would self-promote under her last picture, saying they have the picture, so request to follow them. Instagram even stated that they knew about that specific image and were handling banning it altogether. Don't even get me started on the reaction on 4chan. Incels on 4chan began praising Brandon and claiming he was a hero, but why? Not only are they incels, but what I'm going to say here, again, I'm not saying it's facts. I'm saying these are rumors because I know there's a lot of controversy when talking about the Bianca Devins case because it's mainly the 4chaners that get mad at this. But let me continue. Rumors began circulating that Bianca would use guys, aka her orbiters, for drugs and overall attention. These are some screenshots of apparently her accounts. Regarding those rumors, her mother had this to say about it. The things people are saying about Bianca isn't even true. There are screenshots of things Bianca supposedly said to people, but it wasn't actually Bianca and I have have proof. The person that used to impersonate Bianca admitted it. I don't understand what these sick people get out of leaving vile comments under someone's page. Why don't they have better things to do with their lives? And let's just say those rumors were true. Yeah, she could have been a shitty person, but she did not deserve death especially in that way. And the fact that she's a child or was a child? Did you guys know that shortly after her death, those images were being spam sent to her family? I'm talking about her mother, her sister, her grandpa, her cousins. They were just getting spam sent that image of Bianca's lifeless body. The mom says that till this day, they still get those images in their inboxes. There's a lot more to the story. I watched an entire documentary, which I suggest you guys should watch if you want to get more info about this. The documentary is by 48 Hours. I believe that's the company. I'll try to end this story off on a good note. The only positive thing I could find out about this story is that her Instagram is now being spam tagged with loving photos and her comments are also being spammed with heart emojis, though some idiots slipped through the cracks. But yeah, rest in peace to Bianca Devins. David Kalak. Turns out it's way harder to strangle someone to death than it looks in the movies. Um, duh. Because those people are acting? She fought so damn hard. Check the news for Port Orchard, Washington in a few hours. Her son will be home from school soon. He'll find her, then call the cops. I just wanted to share the pics before they find me. I bought a BB gun that looks realistic enough. When they come, I'll put it and it will be by cop. I understand the doubts. Just check the news. I have to lose my phone now. David Kalik, also known as the 4chan murderer, was a 33-year-old man from Washington who murdered his girlfriend by strangulation and then proceeded to post the images on 4chan for other incels to react to. This happened in 2014, by the way. He posted the images to a room dedicated to celebrity nudes and ex-girlfriend nudes. So it's no doubt this dude was looking for a reaction considering the woman in the pictures was naked in the photos. David's plan was to murder his girlfriend, pretend to have a real weapon, then be killed by a police officer, aka by cop. He knew her 13 year old son would find her body after coming home from school. And that's exactly wow, what, what happened. Oh my god. People. That means he saw her naked and dead. Jesus Christ. Okay. Just about the time the killer was posting these words, the 13 year old son of 30 year old Amber Lynn Copland was arriving home from school in Port Orchard, Washington. He saw his mother on the couch and figured she was sleeping but then he became alarmed. He summoned his father, who does not reside there. The father hurried over and called 911 at 3.32 p.m. The police and the paramedics found the mother beyond saving. Somebody had rifled through her purse and placed her driver's license beside her head with a word scribbled across it, dead. More words were written on a picture that hung on a wall. She killed me first. A third message was on a window blind, bad news. Kalik was sentenced to 82 years in prison. Let's be honest, he's gonna die in there considering uh, he answered when he was 33 years old. Nah, yeah, I don't like this story at all, dude. Like, the trauma for the kid. He has to be mentally by now, bro. Imagine coming home from school, then seeing that, and then, dude, the hatred he has to have for that man, too. Like, 
Brenton Tarrant, otherwise known as the Christchurch Mosque Shooter. On March 15th, 2019, two consecutive mass shootings occurred at mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand during Friday prayer. The attack was carried out by a single gunman who entered both mosques, killing 51 people and injuring 40. Brenton Harrison Tarrant, a 28-year-old man from Grafton, New South Wales, Australia, was arrested shortly afterward. He was described in media reports as a white supremacist and part of the alt-right. He even live-streamed the first shooting on Facebook and prior to the attack had published an online manifesto onto the image board known as 8chan under the politically incorrect room, which is where a lot of racist conversations take place. 8chan is essentially a copy of 4chan under different management. It promotes itself as the free speech friendly 4chan alternative, aka I can be racist and I can post illegal images here and you can't get mad at me, right? We're on 8chan, not 4chan. Yeah. Basically, 8chan just takes a far more extreme view of freedom of speech. That's it. The 8chan post read, Well lads, it's time to stop shit posting and time to make a real life effort post. I will carry out an attack against the invaders and will even live stream the attack via Facebook. The Facebook link is below. By the time you read this, I should be going live. It's been a long ride and despite all your rampant fact fecklessness and degeneracy, you are all top blokes and the best bunch of cobbers a man could ask for. I have provided links to my writings below. Please do your part by spreading my message, making memes, and shitposting as you usually do. If I don't survive the attack, goodbye. God bless, and I will see you all in Valhalla. By the, the way, I'm not straight. I, I do like guys and girls. I know this is so random to say, but I feel like someone's gonna try to cancel me for saying fat. I'm still gonna censor it just because it's YouTube. Yeah, don't try to cancel me for saying fat when uh, people call me that every day because of my sexuality. Don't cancel me, guys. Speaking of the LGBT, I'm bisexual, all right? So this is the first time I say it on my channel, all right? So friends and family that are watching this channel, I fucking like guys and I like girls too. During the shooting, Brenton can be heard saying, subscribe to PewDiePie. PewDiePie reacted shortly after on Twitter, expressing his disappointment and condolences to the families. A month later, PewDiePie officially ended the meme. Just for context, in case anyone doesn't know, in 2019, there was a huge meme, subscribe to PewDiePie, because T-Series was about to pass up PewDiePie, and you know, everyone just didn't want a corporation to be the number one subscribed YouTube channel, so everyone was pushing for PewDiePie to be the most subscribed channel. It's not the case anymore. It started off as a wholesome meme, but you know, a few degenerates come with all the millions of people that were trying to push for it. Brenton Tarrant was sentenced in August to jail for life without parole for the murder of 51 people and attempted murder of 40 others, marking this the worst mass shooting in the country's history. Eric Clanton. In April of 2017, a clash between pro-Trump supporters and anti-fascist counter-protesters, known as Antifa, unfolded at a Patriots Day rally in Berkeley, attended by roughly 1,000 people. A video surfaced where a Trump supporter gets hit hard in the head by a masked man with a bike lock. And I mean he hits this dude so hard in the head that his head just starts bleeding instantly right when he gets hit. The man that got hit ultimately needed stitches. So the guy that got hit was a Trump supporter and our friends over at Politically Incorrect did not like this one bit. These users dedicated their lives to finding out the masked man who hit the Trump supporter and demanded that he get charged. I'll play this clip by internet historian who describes it perfectly and simply. During the night, Paul was working busily. They saw what had happened and they were outraged by it. The hunt was on. They broke down every bit of footage they could. They compiled it all. They found this man who matched every detail. Let's break down the clues. Shoes match. Eyes. Let's enhance it. Blue. Match. Glasses. Match. Height. Approximately 15 Starbucks Ventis. That's a match. They started superimposing his face to confirm. Match. Next, they would start compiling information. His social media, address, phone number, employment. I don't want to play too much of his video, but it will be linked down in the description below. So yeah, these 4chan users doxed him. And I'm not defending him. He literally assaulted someone. You need to be charged for that. Doesn't matter what your political views are, you're a human harming another human. But isn't it insane that they literally found his address and everything from this image? <laughs> what? 4chan users are on another level. Move over Discord mods, because y'all got nothing on 4chan users. Clanton was sentenced to three years probation. Ruben Braithwaite. Okay, so for this segment, I'm gonna read an article. The reason I'm gonna read it from an article is because there are a lot of quotes and I don't wanna paraphrase that, so I'd just rather read straight from the article. I just wanna give credit that this was written by Jason Evans and it's on the website Wales Online. Ruben Braithwaite was 12 years old when he went to live with his dad and stepmom, Fiona Scorfield, at Broadmoor Farm in 2013. She loved him, took good care of him, and was a great believer in him and wanted him to go to university. But five years after she took him into her home, Braithwaite would return 
from school, lure her out of her farmhouse, and cold-heartedly murder her with an axe and a samurai sword. Desensitized through his apparent fascination with gore-filled images on American website 4chan, the teenager had watched her blood drain out of her before calling police. He would later tell officers that he was, quote, convinced he had to do it, and that his motivation was to shock people, to change my life. I just wanted her dead so I could have a life. I'm just fed up, he told officers. The full horrific details of this monstrous crime can be reported for the first time after Braithwaite was jailed for life with a minimum of 15 years. At Swansea Court on Friday, sentencing Judge Mr. Justice Picken was told that in the 12 months before the murder, he had become fascinated with online material about mass killings, suicide, and beheadings, and spent a good deal of time viewing such material. After the killing, he would try to upload the images of his dying stepmom onto the site, but the uploads failed as he was already banned. Police recovered more graphic videos from his phone depicting road traffic accidents and mutilated bodies. The boy said he had become desensitized to gore and was used to seeing blood. So basically this kid lured his stepmom outside of the farm and said there was an injured cat outside. And once she was outside, he knocked her out with an ax. It says the blunt side, the blunt end of the ax. So I'm guessing, you know, not the sharp side, but he knocked her out with the ax. And once she was knocked out, uh, he then sliced her neck with a samurai sword that his dad had under his bed. And then he waited for all the blood to drain out and then called 999, which is uh, the authorities in the United Kingdom and admitted to what he did he's been in jail ever since the judge even said like i just feel so bad for the father because you lost two people you love technically your son which is now going to spend the rest of his life in prison and your wife i swear like every every person i named in this video is legitimately going to hell maybe not the bike lock dude he didn't really kill anyone but yeah i just want to say rest in peace to everyone that i have spoken about in this video and my condolences go out to their families well said if you guys thought this was a quality video make sure to leave a like if you guys like my morbid videos make sure to check out this playlist where it's just all my dark videos and i hope you guys don't think i'm like some psychotic dude that hangs out my room and just like talks about dark stories bro i swear i have a personality outside of these videos i mean my personality shines through i'd like to say and that's why i think a lot of you guys like me want to ask you guys have any video suggestions leave them down in the comments i also forgot to say this so thank you for making it to the end and i also want to say since you made it to the end i want to let you guys know that i have merch so it's kind of funny that i make dark videos but this is my merch so uh yeah i have merch so if you want to represent the tub channel uh make sure to go buy some merch i made it the cheapest option possible i don't care about the profit as long as you guys can rock the merch i'm okay and uh i'll see you guys next time i upload i am truly shocked being final product more and more w when i hear cases like this Oh, man. So let me just say, after I got in the music industry, and once I got out, like I said, I, it, in the music industry, you have to have tough skin if you're working behind, you know, the scenes, if you're an A&R rep, if you get yourself to the executive level, any which way you cut it, you really have to have thick skin. Because if people sometimes are just assholes and are just going to be blunt and to the point. And even though what I would say, quote unquote, normal day people are not necessarily like that. Um, they're ruthless. They're like sharks. And so I've always, like I had mentioned before this video about standing up for people I had left, when I had left the music industry, I had a job working for a uh, nonprofit organization working with people with disabilities, helping them with vocational rehabilitation. So every month I would write, and this was at the Denver VA Medical Center that I was contracted out of. And so every month we would get new clientele that had a documented disability. Now this could go anywhere from uh, paranoid schizophrenic to... Uh, people who have PTSD, ADHD, I mean, anything that would be documented as a disability. And, for instance, there was the most sweetest, wonderful lady. She was maybe five foot, you know, this beautiful little black lady. She was in her 50s, and she just had the most vivacious, vivacious smile. 
and her laughter could light up a room and used to have doctors and administrators come down just to see her smile and laugh like she really could just brighten up your day but she had to have a shot once a month and when it was coming time for her to get the shot to keep you know her paranoid schizophrenic uh you know tendencies down she would really become emotional so just like every other day i've never been the type of supervisor like you need to go hurry up and do this now i just be like and i would tell her just because i'd you know you're treating them a little bit with a fine tooth comb and we're not going to fire them unless they do something egregious uh for i won't even mention that <laughs> but um she was actually a permanent employee so i don't ha- i didn't have to write reports on her but i had to write reports on new clientele that would come into the program to where we're giving them vocational training helping them get back out into the field after you know the war or uh, if they've been homeless and are now getting on their feet receiving some aid you know uh, of course they could only work a few hours if you can't make so much money if you're receiving government aid so the positions they all the positions that we hired uh, somebody for uh, started off like at 26 27 dollars an hour and it was uh, I, at, at first, I had to supervise a mail room, the switchboard, and patient escort. Luckily, they ended up hiring uh, supervisors for that because I was running rampant, and I just, yeah, I couldn't take it. And so I just was concentrating on the mail room, and people already have their pre-notions. Whoever of you guys who work you know, for a, a big business, uh, you know, mail room people are off, you know, often or not like l- looked down upon or just because they're not the ones who are making a lot of money. Well, that wasn't the case with our employees. Uh, you know, none of them would ever say how much they made. Uh, but there were, you know, I I know the GS level system. I know the GS and step system level. And I know what somebody's GS level is or was. And I would never brag to them about, you know, hey, my employees make this much because they were actually earning it. And with her... She was such a hard worker, but there was just one day in particular I had asked her, like, hey, um, do you have, you know, your, uh, you know, your mail cart ready? Is everything organized to go? And she just said, yeah. And then I was like, okay. So I walked down the cafeteria, grab a drink, come back. And then she was sitting in the office with a female supervisor because there was a male supervisor and a female supervisor. And she was crying to her. So it's, I'm like, what's wrong? And of course, I talked to them like, I don't want to say like childish, but almost like that. And it, you know, she's like, she said like I hurt her feelings for asking her about that. And I knew it was just her disability. But what it, it makes me wonder what drives these people to have so little value of life that they would just kill on a whim i i don't i mean it's a rhetorical question for one obviously i know that but it's something that's never going to get answered i mean you know i i'm sure if we're all pushed to a certain point that you know, we felt compelled to do that, whether it's, you know, protecting ourselves or protecting our family. I get that. But just to go shoot up a mosque or kill a girl because she wasn't into you, that that's just, you're just fucking nuts. And that's what also drives me so crazy about the judicial system, because there are so many murders that are basically perpetrated by people who have mental disabilities and they just don't take the time or effort. And when they do take the time or effort to have them, you know, see psychiatrists, you know, I'm no psychiatrist, but I'm just saying you do something depraved and fucked up and a psychiatrist comes in like, yeah, you know, he's not, he's not crazy. Look at his goddamn actions. What kind of a normal person is going to do what he did or she did and say they're not crazy that's pretty fucking you know excuse my language i'm just pissed because i hate 
hearing about young people dying, being killed or killers at a young age. It's like, what's driving them? What's motivating them to do that? And I mean, this has gone on throughout all of humanity, but I don't know. I'm just sorry about my little rant, but this video pissed me off for that simple fact. You know, that poor little girl. And I mean, the rest of the people who were just traumatized by these fucking idiots and assholes. It just, yeah, it, it really hurts. But anyways, I'm going to concentrate on something a little bit more... Uh, uh, not as gloomy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, stick around for our next one. Until then, peace.